voice lounge. Good day, everyone. Welcome to another episode of AF24 News Talks. Today, we are going to be discussing um, the United Nations Climate Change Conference that is currently ongoing in uh, Dubai. Um, it was reported that Nigeria took about 1,411 certificates, although that figure has now been review reviewed. But the um, initial response of Nigerians to that was that um, the government was again spending wastefully by taking you know, so many people to represent the country at the COP28 going on. And so I just want to discuss today with um, the editor of the paper, Dr. Lainka Uyegulu, to understand the situation better, to just give us his thoughts about what is unfolding. So first of all, um, Mr. Abid, Dr. Uyegulu, what do you think about the report of Nigeria being currently stands the third highest um, country with delegates? Well, as we know, Nigeria is the biggest country in Africa and the biggest in the black world. So if we say that Nigeria has the third biggest uh, delegate, there may not be any problem with that. But what exactly are these delegates going there to do? That is the question we should be asking ourselves. And how did they get there? Um, as it is with such issues, uh, sometimes we, we ban the figures without examining the figures critically. Yes, Nigeria may have 1,400 whatever delegates, but the question is, how many of these delegates are sponsored by government? Because in the first place, people hear conference of parties and they think that it is political parties. No. It is parties that are involved in climate affairs. And in these parties, we have civil society groups, we have NGOs, we have government uh, agencies, and so on and so forth. The government has not helped itself. What do I mean? A spokesman of government issued a statement and said, out of all these 1,400 and something, government sponsored about 500. Another issued a statement to say the government did not sponsor more than 800. So you have a situation where you don't know which to believe. But I want to say that in these delegates that we have that are registered, there are situations where you have, when you go to a conference, I've been a delegate to such a conference before, you will hear that Nigeria has so 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 number of delegates. What it means is not that Nigerian government sponsored all of this. Journalists that are sponsored by media houses or some uh, NGOs or international organizations, they will go there, they will register as Nigerians. I remember in 2019, I was, uh, I attended the World Health World Long Health Conference in India. I registered as a Nigerian. But it was not the Nigerian government nor the media house I work for that, that sent me. It was an international organization. But I will register as a Nigerian. So when you look at that, people will say that Nigeria has so, if they counted now, they will, they will count, it, they will count me, they will have counted me as a Nigerian delegate. But it, I was not sponsored by a Nigerian delegate. So the same thing, perhaps is happening in uh, UAE now. Uh, that is not an excuse, or I'm not speaking on behalf of government. So the same thing might have been happening in the in, in UAE now that there are 1,400 whatever number of Nigerians. Some Nigerians might be resident in uh, the U.S., working for a U.S. organization they have got their sponsored to go and represent. When they, when they write, they might say, okay, they are coming from the U.S., but they are Nigerians. So maybe those are the kind of people that are also counted as part of Nigerian delegates. But be that as it may, I think uh, when I looked at the uh, figure that was released a while ago that I saw, they said 
state house, that is our own, the presidency, has 138 delegates. Uh, National Council on Climate Change at 54. Minister, Federal Ministry of Environment at 53. National Assembly, 36. NNPC, 28, and so on and so forth. So when you count all these, some of them, for instance, if you say the State House at 138, that one, of course, will be sponsored by the State House budget. The National Council on Climate Change, 54, will not be sponsored by the government directly, but the state, uh, the National Council on Climate Change. But they are also government officials. The same thing with Federal Ministry of Environment, National Assembly, NNPCs, and the rest of them. But what we should concern ourselves with is what is it that these people have gone there to do? Like the one I told you, I went to India. There was people, it was a health thing. There were people who came from the Federal Ministry of Health then. The day, the, the most of the, uh, the discussion, you find out that you will not see some of those delegates. Maybe they are in town trying to buy one thing or the other. What we think, what I think should be emphasized is those who are going for such conferences or co a party convention or whatever they call it, there must be a way to monitor them. Because when they come back, what report do they give? What is it that they have been done? Because some people just go, they enjoy the experience, they buy things, and that's the end. What we should be thinking about now is, okay, Nigeria have 1,500 delegates. When they come back, what is the report that they are going to give? What are the takeaways that they are supposed to be? This conference is for nations that are polluting the environment. What is the level of pollution that Nigeria contributes to the world climate change and necessitates our going there? Or what are they going to learn? Or what are they going to in the in the West now, they are talking of doing it with petrol and new power vehicles. But these vehicles are going to come to Africa. Now Nigeria will take a, a larger chunk of it. People will not think about that. That okay, what do we do? Do we reject this? Do we try and make sure that uh, when they are coming? What are the remediation steps that we are going to ask for? Those are things that we should ask all those who went there to, to, to pursue. I think um, just for added context, um, the revised list of delegates says that about 422 were sponsored by the Nigerian government. And um, it represents the third highest this year. And Historically, I think it is um, the highest nation with delegates from Africa that have gone to the COP event was Egypt last year with 100. And because they hosted it in Egypt. They hosted yeah. It. So at the end of the day, uh, I just wanted to express a little bit more on what do you think Nigerians, what should be their reaction to this? Should they become to wait for the to, for the effects of this, for the result of this? Or is this just another? Um, a broken record of the same problem here. Yes. Um, you see, going to this kind of a conference is a marathon. It's not a short dash that you see the results in a short while. But what Nigerians will begin to think about is why did we have, even at 400, I still think we have a large delegation. Because we are talking about a lack of foreign exchange. What they are going to do is we are going to spend foreign exchange. Foreign exchange in accommodation, foreign exchange for as, a, what do they call it? Uh, that money they give them, BTA or no, there's a... Per diem. Per diem, exactly. Per diem that they are going to get. So if we reduce the number of those who are going and we make it tight, make it specialist, people will come back 
and write report. The report that will help the nation to cope with climate change issues. But you find out that most of the people who are going are either jambori seekers, people who just want to buy something in UAE, uh, what one presenter used to call, if mama could see me now, that <laughs> when they come back from the Dubai, they will wear it and say, ah, this is what I bought from Dubai. And those for them, that for them is the greatest gain of the climate uh, conference. So what we need to do is what has happened you, you you remember one of uh, one of our, one of us uh, Henry Okonkwo did a story about uh, Ayetoro. Mm. Ayetoro in Ondo State is one of the most affected community in Nigeria. A friend of mine, as I said, is they they, they are in uh, they they are also attending that conference now. They did a film about communities that are affected. And Ayetoro is one of it, the communities. What is it that the country will do for Ayetoro community? The community is almost disappearing. Mm. In fact, the film that they did, the people were complaining seriously that, look, they don't have... A, the, the, their life that has always been dependent on fish farming and uh, other things is almost non-existent now. But... What? Why did this happen? There is a uh, Ororo oil well, which they said has been abandoned for about 13 or 14 years by the federal government. This thing is burning every day and is shrinking their land in terms of uh, the, the, the fire, this thing, and then the, the, the coastal erosion too. It's part of it. But when they come back, will anybody remember Etoro? I'm not sure anybody will. So, the, those are the things that we must focus our attention on. The Niger Delta, the, 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 the north that has a problem of uh, arid region and so on, those are the areas we should focus on. But when they come back, the report they will bring, I hope it will focus on these communities that have been impacted negatively. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Africa as a whole has contributed just about 2 to 3 percent of global emissions, but it also stands disproportionately as one of the regions that at risk when it comes to climate change. So, you as just share your thoughts about what Nigeria as a country is doing, our direction, especially with the report of delegates. Do you think it is excessive, or do you think that is the kind of response that is the kind of um, attitude we should see from our government and share your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and follow us across all our social media platforms. Thank you for joining us today. Have a wonderful